to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin. This is the gospel of Christ to proclaim good news unto the poor. The gospel of Christ, spreading the soul-saving message of Jesus. And now, Ben Bailey. This is the gospel of Christ. Sadly, Agrippa said, almost, you persuade me to become a Christian. Acts chapter 26, verse number 28. We're so glad that you've joined us for our study of the book of Acts today. Today is our final lesson in the book of Acts and what a powerful, exciting study Acts is. And again, we're glad that you joined us for this study. Uh, we want you to, if you don't have your Bible handy, we want you to pause for just a minute, locate it, as we're going to look to the Word of God together in our study of the wonderful book of Acts. As always, today's lesson is being brought to you by congregations of the Church of Christ and individual Christians in those churches. And so we're so glad that you've joined us for this broadcast, and we want to encourage you to visit the Lord's Church in your area. If you'd like to know more about the plan of salvation, uh, what God wants us to do to live a good Christian life, worship of the church, what moral matters, whatever it may be, please visit with the members of the Lord's Church in your area. If you're looking for a home congregation or a place to worship, we encourage you to visit with these brethren. They'd be glad to have you stop by their assembly, whether that is on Sunday morning or Sunday night or Wednesday for Bible study. You will find people there who are kind and loving, who want to know what the Bible says and have a deep concern for other souls. Friend, we'd also like to help you here at the Gospel of Christ. If you checked out our website, thegospelofchrist.com, from there you can access all our material, not only on the book of Acts, but on every book of the Old Testament, every book of the New Testament, and a large variety of topical studies. And so if you would, check out our website, thegospelofchrist.com. If you'd like to have this series, this eight-lesson study on the book of Acts, we'd love to make that available to you free of charge. Just go to our website, fill out a free media request form, and we can send that to you in several different formats, audio, video, whatever you may need. We'll make that available to you. Easiest way is just for a digital download, and you can get that instantaneously. And we also want to encourage you to visit uh, our, our Facebook page. Check us out on Facebook. Like us and follow us there. And don't forget about the Gospel of Christ app. It's available for Apple phones and Android phones free of charge and the Play Store's there and you can download that and it's a great way to follow along with what we're doing and study the Word of God in our fast-paced world today. As we now bring the book of Acts to a close, this book reminds us of what must I do to be saved. It teaches a person how to become a Christian. That's what the book of Acts is all about. What must I do to be saved? It asks and it answers that wonderful question. And Paul now, in Acts chapters 26 through 28, he is now going to take the gospel from Festus and Felix to Agrippa all the way across the ocean to Rome itself. And the gospel is going to spread because of Paul appealing to Caesar, Acts chapter 25, verse number 11. And so Paul uses the opportunities that God presents him with. Look at Acts chapter 26, and I want you to see how did Paul feel about being put before these dignitaries and preaching the gospel? Well, Paul was happy to do that. Look at Acts chapter 26, and notice what Paul says before Agrippa in verse number 2. Paul stretched out his hand, answered for himself, I think myself hath King Agrippa, because today I shall answer myself before you concerning all the things of which I am accused by the Jews. Christians need to realize and, that it's a privilege and that it's an opportunity to give a personal defense for Jesus Christ. Paul was not upset. Was he, did people do Paul wrong? Absolutely. 
Were the things they were saying about him true? No, Paul was not a plague. He was not a creator of dissension, and he was not a ringleader, as they accused him. But did Paul, you look at this as a happy opportunity to give a defense for the gospel? Absolutely. And friend, that's how we've got to look at the privileges and the opportunities that we're given. We need to be ready always to give an answer for a reason of the hope that's within us with meekness and with fear. And so as we think about this, Paul now goes through with his defense of the gospel. Look at what Paul says beginning in Acts chapter 26, verses 4 following. Paul says, My manner of life from my youth, which was spent from the beginning among my own nation at Jerusalem, all the Jews know. They knew me from the first, if they were willing to testify, that according to the strictest sect of our religion, I lived a Pharisee. And now I stand and am judged for the hope of the promise made by God to our fathers. To this promise, our twelve tribes, earnestly serving God night and day, hope to attain. For this hope's sake, King Agrippa, I am accused by the Jews. Why should it be thought incredible to you that God raises the dead? Indeed, I myself thought I must do many things contrary to the name of Jesus of Nazareth. This I also did in Jerusalem, and many of the saints I shut up in prison, having received authority from the chief priest, and when they were put to death, I cast my vote against them, and I punished them often in every synagogue, and compelled them to blaspheme, and being exceedingly enraged against them, I persecuted them even to foreign cities. While thus occupied, as I journeyed to Damascus with authority and commission from the chief priest, at midday, O king, along the road, I saw a light from heaven brighter than the sun shining around me and those who journeyed with me. When we all had fallen to the ground, I heard a voice speaking to me and saying in the Hebrew language, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? It's hard for you to kick against the goats. So I said, who are you, Lord? And he said, I'm Jesus, whom you're persecuting. But rise and stand on your feet. For I have appeared to you for this purpose, to make you a minister and a witness, both of the things which you've seen and of the things which I will get to reveal to you. I will deliver you from the Jewish people as well from the Gentiles to whom I now send you. Why? To open their eyes in order to turn them from darkness to light, from the power of Satan to God, that they may receive the forgiveness of sins and an inheritance among those who are sanctified by faith in me. When Paul stands before Agrippa, what does Paul appeal to? Well, Paul appeals to his character in Judaism. He said, if these Jews would have come along to testify, the only thing they could have told you is they know me and that I was a strict follower of the Jewish law. Paul then appeals past his own character to the promise of the fathers, verses 6 and 7. The promise to Abraham that I'll make you a great nation and in your seed, I'll bless all nations. The promise to Isaac and to Jacob and, and the promise to David that one of your throne will sit in the kingdom and will reign forever. 2 Samuel 7, verses 12 through 14. He then mentioned that God has power to raise the dead and that this ought not to surprise uh, Agrippa himself. Agrippa had heard of this. He'd heard of Elisha uh, being raised. He'd heard of Lazarus. He, 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 he had heard of Jesus. He knew of the power of God. And then Paul tells about his own life from being a persecutor of Christians to being one who is helping others to convert to the cause of Christ. And Paul now realizes that mission is to turn people from darkness to light and to point them to the way of salvation itself. And so the purpose and power of Paul's preaching was to help men and women to know Jesus. Friend, to many people, to many people especially living today, being a Christian kind of seems like crazy talk in a lot of people's mind today. The same was true of Agrippa. Look at what is said in Acts chapter 26, verse number 24. Now, as he thus made his defense, Festus said with a loud voice, Paul, you're beside yourself. Much learning is driving you mad. These people who thought they had it all, thought they knew it all, who were living in their mind the best life ever, they kind of looked down on Christianity and God's plan and the scriptures. It's just kind of crazy talk. And yet 
It's the only way people can be saved. Being a Christian is not crazy. In fact, being a Christian puts one in his right mind. Mark chapter 5, verse 15, the man who had the multiplicity of demons, after he came in contact with Jesus, he was actually clothed and in his right mind, the Bible tells us. And so Paul, how does he respond to someone saying you're crazy or you're insane? Just like Proverbs teaches us, a soft answer turns away wrath. Look at what Paul says in verse number 25. But Paul said, I'm not mad, most noble Festus, but speak the words of truth and reason. For the king, whom I also speak freely, knows these things. For I'm convinced that none of these things escape his attention, since this thing was not done in a corner. King Agrippa, do you believe the prophets? I know you believe the prophets. And so Agrippa, he had a background. He knew some of these things. He'd heard the, he'd read the stories of the Old Testament. He had heard what happened with Jesus. It didn't happen in a corner or under a rock somewhere. And so Paul responds by saying, I'm not mad, but I'm just telling the truth. And he goes on to appeal to Agrippa that he knows that truth and he knows it's right. Now Agrippa, who should have known this, Agrippa, who had heard those stories, who none of this happened in a corner and he was aware of. How did he respond to the gospel? In my estimation, this is one of the saddest verses in all of scripture. How will I respond to the gospel? How will you respond to the gospel? How did Agrippa respond? Look at Acts 26, verse 28. Then Agrippa said to Paul, Almost you persuade me to become a Christian. And Paul said, I would to God that not only you, but also all who hear me today might become both almost and altogether such as I am, except for these chains. Can you imagine Paul standing there? Paul said, almost. I wish everybody were almost and altogether as I am, except these chains. What a, what a sad statement by Agrippa here. Almost you persuade me to become a Christian. I wonder how many people have said almost. I almost obeyed the gospel. I was almost baptized for remission of my sins. I almost followed Jesus. And almost won't cut it. To be almost saved is to be altogether lost. To almost be a Christian is to still be a child of the devil. You cannot, almost doesn't count in Christianity. There aren't any uh, points awarded for getting close. Paul wished and begged that Agrippa and everybody he came in contact with would become a Christian, just like he was and would obey the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, Agrippa, of course, doesn't do that, and so he's going to send Paul all the way to Caesar himself. And Paul, now in Acts 27, is on a journey in the tempest of the sea to make his way to Rome. And that journey takes a lot of detours along the way. Paul's great faith in God is seen as he journeys to Rome itself. Look in Acts 27, beginning in verse number 22. As they are on the ship in the middle of the sea, headed to Rome, Bible says in verse 22, Paul says, as these men think they're about to be destroyed, now I urge you to take heart. There'll be no loss of life among you, but only of the ship. For there stood by me this night an angel of God to whom I belong and whom I serve saying, do not be afraid, Paul. You must be brought before Caesar. And indeed, God has granted you all those who sail with you. Therefore, take heart, men. For I believe God that it will be just as he told me. However, we must run on a certain, run a course on a certain island. And that island, of course, is Malta. But listen to Paul's faith in God. Paul was given a vision. And in that vision, an angel told him, the ship's going to be lost. But you and everybody on the boat's going to be saved. And Paul said, take heart, men. I believe God that it'll be just as he told me. Faith truly is the victory. 1 John 5, verse 4, and our faith in God is greater than anything else we might can imagine. I can't always see the outcome. I don't know how all the pieces are going to fall together. I don't know how it's going to work together in the end, but I know this. If I seek first the kingdom of God, God's going to take care of his children. 
And so God cared for Paul in the shipwreck. He's going to care for us during the troubles of life. And God is always proving He is the Almighty God through His power, through His Word, and in our lives as well. Now, watch what happens in Acts chapter 28. God told Paul that they were going to be shipwrecked on the island of Malta. And watch what happens. This is such an interesting scene. Look in Acts chapter 28. As Paul goes to Rome, something happens along the way. Verse number one. Now when they had escaped, then they then found out that the island, this is after the ship's been wrecked, they then found out that the island was called Malta. And the natives of this island showed us unusual kindness. For they kindled a fire, made us all welcome because of the rain that was falling and because of the cold. But when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, a viper came out because of the heat and fastened on his hand. So when the natives saw the creature hanging from his hand, they said to one another, No doubt this man is a murderer, whom though he escaped the sea, justice does not allow him to live. But Paul shook off the creature into the fire and suffered no harm. However, they were expecting that he would swell up or suddenly fall down dead. But after they looked for a long time, saw no harm come to him, they changed their minds and said that he was a god. Now, Paul's not looking for the glory. He's not looking for the praise. This is all about God. But can you imagine this scene in your mind? These people on Malta were really unusually kind, the Bible says. And so they're concerned about these people who've just suffered shipwreck. They make them a fire, probably gave them something warm to eat, whatever it may have been. And Paul's helping out. So he gathers up some wood and throws it on that fire. And can you imagine a big old snake? When that, when that wood got up by that fire, that snake got hot and it come out and latched on the first thing it could grab a hold of. And that was Paul's hand, a viper. Big old snake has bit Paul on the hand and is hanging off his hand. And the people there, they, they began to rationalize, although this guy didn't drown, justice means he's still going to die. He must be a murderer or some bad guy. So they're watching him. Can you imagine him staring at the Apostle Paul? Any minute now, this guy's going to swell up and drop dead. And they keep looking, and they keep looking. And finally, after enough time has gone by, they change their mind very quickly. He's not a murderer. He's a god. I have to admit, the people there may have been pretty kind, but they were also pretty fickle in their thinking as well. They could go from one extreme to the other. But I wonder the impact this event had on those people at Malta when somebody else or maybe somebody connected with Paul went back and talked to the people there. That event would be proof that there is a God and they could take that event and talk to them. The miracles are designed not to, 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 to make oneself look good, but to prove one as a spokesman of God. And, and this was an opportunity for Paul or others to teach about Jesus and the plan of salvation. Now, does Paul make it off the island of Malta? And does he make it to Rome itself? He absolutely does. Look at what happens in Acts 28. Let's read verses 11 through 16 together. After three months, we sailed in an Alexandrian ship whose figurehead was the twin brothers which had wintered at the island. And landing at Syracuse, we stayed three days. From there, we circled round and reached Regium. And after one day, the south wind blew. And the next day, we came to Puteoli, where we found brethren and were invited to stay with them seven days. And so we went toward Rome. And from there... When the brethren heard about us, they came to meet us as far as a pie forum and three ends. When Paul saw them, he thanked God and took courage. Now when, listen to this, this is such a, a big statement here. When we came to Rome, the centurion delivered the prisoners to the captain of the guard. Paul was permitted to dwell by himself with the soldiers who guarded him. God's purpose for Paul was to be a light to the Gentiles the Gentile world to the furthest extent that many knew of went all the way to Rome itself. Think about this with me, okay? God wants the gospel to go to all the world, right? God uses the envious, jealous, hypocritical Jews to push him into the hands of the Romans. 
God uses the Roman dime, the Romans pay for Paul to take the gospel to Rome itself. We're talking about an idolatrous people who care little about Christ and little about Christianity. They fund Paul's mission trip to Rome itself, where from there, the God, Paul has his own house. People are coming to him. Some of Caesar's household are eventually converted. The, 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 the power of God and the providence of God to make all this happen in and of itself is just completely amazing. And so when Paul gets there to Rome, he's now going to make an appeal to some of the brethren at Rome. Look at Romans chapter, or Acts chapter 28, verse number 17 following. It came to pass after three days that Paul called the leaders of the Jews together. So when they'd come together, he said to them, men and brethren, Though I've done nothing against our people or the customs of our fathers, yet I was delivered as a prisoner from Jerusalem into the hands of the Romans, who when they'd examined me, wanted to let me go because there was no cause for putting me to death. But when the Jews spoke against it, I was compelled to appeal to Caesar, not that I had anything of which to accuse my nation. For this reason, therefore, I have called for you to see you and speak with you, because for the hope of Israel I am bound with this chain. Then they said to him, We neither received letters from Judea concerning you, nor have any of the brethren who came reported or spoken evil of you, but we desire to hear from you what you think. For concerning this sect, we know that it is spoken against everywhere. So when they had appointed him a day, many came to Paul at his lodging, to whom he explained, and solemnly testified of the kingdom of God. Listen now, persuading them concerning Jesus from both the law of Moses and the prophets from morning till evening. And some were persuaded by the things which were spoken and some disbelieved. So when they did not agree among themselves, they parted after Paul had said one word. The Holy Spirit spoke rightly through Isaiah the prophet to our fathers. There were Jews dwelling in Rome who needed to hear the gospel. God sends Paul not only to preach to the Gentile world there, but Jews are coming to his house every day. And Paul is preaching from morning till evening. And some of those people are converted. And some of those people become members of the church of the Lord Jesus Christ that we read about in the book of Romans. Were there problems with Judaism there? Absolutely. Were those problems addressed? Sure they were. But friend, look at God's use of Paul, God's use of the hypocritical Jews, God's use of the Roman government to accomplish his plan, the saving of souls. And so when I think about Paul, when I think about the ending of the book of Acts, you can't help but be impressed with how God fulfilled the Great Commission and did it by amazing means, means that most people couldn't have dreamed of even. If I said to you, the idolatrous, evil Roman government who loves only themselves is going to pay for Paul to go to Rome and spread the gospel and set up the church, what would you think about that? Well, you'd probably think, that's a pretty far-fetched one. My friend, that's exactly what happened. God used that in his purpose to ultimately accomplish his will. Now, what do we learn is the last thing that God's servant Paul is doing that we have record of in Rome. Look in Acts chapter 28, verses 30 and 31. Kind of a, a final closing on Paul in the book of Acts. The Bible says this in verse number 30. Then Paul dwelt two whole years in his own rented house, received all who came to him, preaching the kingdom of God and teaching the things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ with all confidence, no one forbidding him. If you could have an opportunity to Paul come to your area and preach and live for two years and people to freely come to, I wonder if the church met there. Uh, all these people coming to Paul and, and he's preaching, nobody's forbidding that. Can you imagine what good would be done in a two-year time? I mean, it just imagine what you could do. If Paul was there and people come hear the gospel, while well, we'd set Paul up to preach every Sunday, we'd go out and knock doors and we'd have Paul, people gather right at his house and he'd just give a good. Imagine how that worked out great for the kingdom and for the church and for lost souls. And so again, see the providence of God. 
see God working in all of this. But as we mentioned, the book of Acts is not just about the gospel being spread in the first century, not just about the gospel going to Rome. My friend, the book of Acts is about God's plan of salvation for all men. Remember that key verse, Acts chapter 2, verse number 36? Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly, God's made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. Friend, the book of Acts is about Jesus as the Son of God, who died for my sins and for your sins, and what I've got to do to become a Christian. They cried when they heard those words in Acts 2, verse 37. They cried out, Men and brethren, what shall we do? And Peter's clarion answer rang out that day. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The Bible tells us those who gladly received his word were baptized, Acts 2 verse 42, and the Lord added to the church daily those who are being saved, Acts chapter 2 verse 47. Friend, have you obeyed the gospel like they did in the book of Acts? Have you heard that message? That Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by him. Do you believe that with all your heart? Would you be willing to turn from a life of sin and turn in obedience to God? Would you be baptized just as they were in Acts chapter 2 and just as Saul of Tarsus was in Acts twenty two sixteen, 16? Would you be baptized for the remission of your sins to have those sins washed away? Maybe you've never become a Christian and you'd like to study more about it or talk to someone more about that. We'll be happy to visit with you. And friend, if you've never put on the Lord Jesus Christ, we encourage you to visit the Lord's church in your area. They'd be happy to talk with you more about the plan of salvation. And we're so happy that you've joined us for our study of the book of Acts. Join us next time as we'll study more together. Today's closed captions are brought to you by Christian Family Bookstore in Chattanooga, Tennessee. We encourage you to visit thechristianfamilybookstore.com for all your Christian book needs. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the Gospel of Christ? The Gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the Churches of Christ with its whole aim to take the Gospel to the whole world. We do that through TV, Internet, free media, and streaming. Our motto truly is to take the whole gospel to the whole world, and we believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious programs today, we're concerned about lost souls, not your wallet. The gospel of Christ. Visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study materials, including audio and video of our lessons. Request your copy of today's lesson by completing a media request form online. On-demand downloads are also available at thegospelofchrist.com. We would love to hear from you. Email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com or call 844 844- Six Gospel. You may also write us at the address on your screen. Search your app store for The Gospel of Christ to access our mobile app on your this smartphone. Is the gospel of Christ.